skipping, which is when you take your lure and you skip it across the surface of the water, underneath, around obstacles, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can learn how to read your graphs, your sonars, look for fish and structure where the fish might be hiding. And you can you can uh, learn to tie knots and tie on your lures better and faster and make, make tie stronger knots. And there's all kinds of stuff you can go on all day. There's too much to talk about in one day though. So this, this fish, he got hooked and he's bleeding just a little bit. And you can take Mountain Dew or any sort of citric soda like this. If you got a fish that's bleeding, take that Mountain Dew and pour it where they're bleeding. The Mountain Dew technique is one way of conservation keeping as many fish alive as possible. And in the tournaments, you get penalized for dead fish, and it is illegal to replace a dead fish with a fish that you have caught later on in the day. So you have to keep that dead fish all day, and no matter what, you get penalized for it. Skipping docks is where you just take your, you have to have the right rod and reel set up, but you take your lure, and if, if you get good enough at it, you can skip pretty much anything, but mostly soft plastic baits like this, this fluke or something like a jig or something like that. And the advantage to it is, is you're getting your bait in places that most guys don't get their bait into. And on a hot, not really hot, but a sunny day like this, those fish like the shade. So they go up underneath that dock and they might be in the very darkest back corner of it and you can't get to it without skipping. But the only time you can't do it is when it's real windy. And today's not real windy, so we'll be able to do it. Let me go ahead and show you. Yeah. You can you can hit all the slots. That one wasn't very good. You can go real deep into the dock, or you can go just a little ways into the dock. It takes a lot of practice. throwing is called a frog and there you can throw them absolutely anywhere they're weedless you can throw them open water you can throw them in the grass they, they're good for about everything it's one of my favorite ways to catch fish because it's so fun when they hit but uh it just stays on the top and you twitch your rod a little bit at a time and if they want it they'll hit it just like anything but right now I'm working it through this grass because this time of year they should be moving up into the back of this creek because the gizzard shad will be back up in here. So the bass are gonna follow them. And you use braided line on it because if a fish gets you in that grass, it's gonna break your line if you're using anything else. Shot. It's real simple. What I like to do with 
do this is I like to find fish on the sonar. And if you can drop it down right next to the sonar, you can see the bait go down. I didn't do it that time, I didn't get it in the right spot. But you can watch the fish follow it down, and you can only see them eat it if they're down there. And that's a, it's just an easy way to catch a few fish. Normally they're smaller, but it's fun. two types of line together, like that right there. That's fluorocarbon, that's braided line. The braided line, you use it for sensitivity and you can get a better hook set on a longer cast. And if you use colored braid, you can uh, you can see it better if it's real windy or real cloudy or raining. But you use this fluorocarbon because it's clear and the fish can't see it. And it still has good sensitivity. So you tie them together with what's called a uninot and it's real strong and it, it just keeps the two types aligned together. And then you can tie, you can tie a drop shot onto this. You can tie a drop shot, whack glue, all kinds of different stuff. So I use what's called a drop shot hook. It looks like that. It looks like a miniature saltwater hook. And the way you tie it is you wet your line, you put it through the top of the eye there top of the eye on the hook and you go back through the bottom of it. Making a loop. Making a loop. This is called a Palomar knot. For a drop shot you want to have a, a long tag in which is, just means end has the end on it and you take that loop you wrap it around the two straight end, the straight ends of the line there that are together and take that loop through that the hole you made around the two straight ends and you cinch it down wet it cinch it down and then you take that loop again and wrap it around the hook cinch it down just like that. For a drop shot, you take this end, the end that has, it's not connected to the rod, and you put it back through the top of the hook. And you just put your weight on it. 